love of God. Yes, we know out of John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We know this. But do you know his love for you? Mm. That's something to think about. That is something to think about. We have no announcement this morning. We do want to keep in our prayers our sick and shedding. Those who couldn't make it here this morning. It is a blessing that he woke us up this morning in our right mind. Started us on our way with a portion of our well-being. God is good. God is good. Our responsive reading is coming out of the 91st number of Psalms. And it reads as this. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fall of snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near you, your tent. For he will be for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hand so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, say the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I have just read the 91st number of Psalm. May it be useful to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen.
of his love. Now, woo, our children sound so good this morning, won't you agree? All it takes is a few. Make God notice. I can never get enough. Never get enough. He watches over us as we go and come every day. That's his love. Now we prepare for our tithing offerings, our ushers will come. As it says in the Bible, it's better to give than to receive. That's the economy.
for not announcing about our pastor. He's, uh, he's not with us today. He's resting. And he is doing better. But I, I just want to let everybody know to keep him in your prayers. Please. And also, the baptism that was supposed to be for this morning will be on next Sunday. So, the little sister <laughs> that is going to be baptized, which is my granddaughter, would be next Sunday, third Sunday. So, let's all be grateful that we're bringing another saint into the fold. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 As Reverend Heard said, let's keep Pastor Coleman lifted up in our prayers. He's always there for everybody. He's always on the go. He never slows down. But he's at home resting right now with the He's getting the proper rest that he deserves right now. And we're going to keep him lifted up. Amen. It's a delight and honor to be able to stand one more time and preach God's word. It's just good to be at home. I've been out preaching just about every Sunday, the Sundays that I wasn't here, I've been in different places preaching, but it's good to be at home. Amen? If you will, bow for a moment. Lord God, it's once again that I come just to say thank you. God, I thank you for allowing me to stand and preach your word one more time. Lord, thank you for allowing me to see another day. God, you're my strength. You're my redeemer. It's in Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen? Amen. Just for a moment this morning, I will... Text coming from a very familiar passage. The book of Psalm. Psalm 23, verse 5. And it reads... Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth on. The word of God for the people of God. Amen? Amen. Just for a few minutes, I want to talk about sipping from your salsa because your cup is overflowed. Amen. In Psalms 23, David talks about three things. He does three things. He talks about the Lord in verse 1 through 3. He talks about the Lord again in verses 3 and 4. 4, that is. Then he talks about the goodness of the Lord in verse 5 and 6. To get a better understanding of the psalm, you have to hit the rewind button and read Psalms 22 first. Then you have to fast forward and read Psalms 24. Because 22, 23, and 24, they work together. They work hand in hand with each other. In Psalms 22, we see the cross. In Psalms 23, we see the shepherd. In Psalms 24, we see the crown, the king's crown. In Psalms 22, Christ is the Savior. In Psalms 23, he's the uh, satisfied. In Psalms 24, he's sovereign. In other words, in Psalms 22, he's the foundation. In Psalms 23, he's the manifestation. In Psalms 24, he's the expectation. Brothers and sisters, it, it's okay if, if, if to put praise, a praise token in the meter and tell someone who you're talking about. This morning we're talking about 
Jesus. It's okay to talk about Jesus. See, in Psalms 22, he dies. In Psalms 23, he is living. In Psalms 24, he's coming back. You see, in Psalms 22, he speaks of past. In Psalms 23, he speaks of the present. In Psalms 24, he's glorious. He's our glorious future. In Psalms 23, he gives, in Psalms 22, he gives his life to the sheep. In Psalms 23, he loves the sheep. In Psalms 24, he gives light when he's come up here. The truth of the matter is, the Lord is known by different names. Jehovah Rapha in verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. Jehovah Jireh in verse 1. The Lord provide. Je Jehovah Shalom verse 2. The Lord my peace. Jehovah Rapha verse 3. The Lord my healer. Jehovah Shalom verse 4. The Lord is always there. Jehovah Nisi verse 5. The Lord is my bearer. Jehovah Elohim, the Lord Most High. Somebody in this room right now will be shouting because the Lord has been so good to you in so many different ways. He, he watched over you last night. He stopped by this morning and, and woke you up. He, he, somebody just ought not be able to hold their peace right now because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, Somebody in this room knows about sipping from your salsa because your cup is overflowing. It's not because we deserve any of it. It's because God is so gracious. In, in other words, what David is trying to say, he's trying to tell us, the Lord will bless you. Regardless of your faults, regardless of what you did, regardless of who you used to be. The Lord will bless you in his time, not yours. You might think that you deserve to be blessed today, but the Lord has a way of showing you when you'll be blessed. Not just because you think you ought to be blessed. We all think we deserve a blessing, but in other words, do you really deserve to be blessed? What have you done to be blessed? Have you, have you, have you picked up the word of study? Have you had a little talk with Jesus? When, why do you deserve to be blessed? The Lord blesses you in his time and, and when he wants to. He blesses you as he sees fit. Some of us can't handle blessings. Y'all will give me this morning. Uh, in, 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 in this life, there are so many blessings. When, when the Lord fills your cup, it's because you've done something to deserve to get your cup to be filled. Not just because you think your cup should be filled and overflow. Because if you are in a place to be blessed, you best believe the Lord will bless you in his time. He will do it because he can do it. Another reason to be blessed and rejoice, it, it lies in the picture of the cup that has been made to overflow. See, in, in, in the old days when the Lord or you were in the host house, just say if you were at somebody else's house and they fill your cup halfway, that means that they're ready for you to go. But if they fill your cup to the top and it overflows, that means that they're enjoying your company and they want you to stay. That, that's the same with the Lord. When, when the Lord just gives you half a cup, that means he's trying to tell you something. But when the Lord overflows your cup, that means he's enjoying your company and he has more blessings in store for you. See, back, back in the days when we were small, I, I don't know about you brothers and sisters, but I remember seeing my granddaddy. Uh, he'd have a cup of coffee, and for some reason, he would pour the coffee till it flowed over in the sauce. And, and I heard him say when I was a, a child, he said, 
everything in the saucer belonged to me. But everything in the cup belonged to him. I, I, I didn't quite understand that until I got older. I understood what, 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 what he was talking about, his blessings. When he overflowed that cup, he had blessings. He, he had more blessings than he could do anything with. But he would always let me drink from the saucer. I, I didn't understand that, but I understand it now. The God's blessings, when he overflow your cup, he's pouring more, he's giving you more than you deserve, but he's giving you everything that you need. He's giving you that overflow where you can drink from your saucer instead of having to drink from your cup. Amen? When the Lord filled David's cup, it was because David's cup overflowed. He gave David so many blessings. I just have one question. Does the Lord ever overfill your cup? If the Lord overfills your cup, then that means he's enjoying your company. That, that means that you have more blessings coming. Not, not just because you deserve them, it's because you're doing something right. You're doing something that the Lord likes, not just what you like. You're doing what he asks you to do. So he's overflowing your cup. Brothers and sisters, David tells us that the blessings that come from the Lord are so great that you won't even be able to help. Sometimes in life, when we go to the Lord, we go to the Lord with an empty cup, expecting something. But if your cup is already empty and you're not putting forth anything to get that cup to overflow, then something, you need to recheck yourself. When you go to the Lord, you don't go to the Lord and say, well, Lord, you know this empty cup, you, you do what you do and I'm going to keep on doing it. No, you get, Lord, I need you to fill my cup. I need you to run it over. Then there are other times when, when we go to the Lord with so much in our cup that there's no room for it to overflow. So how can you go to the Lord with a cup that's already overflowing and ask for more? That don't go hand in hand with each other. When you go to the Lord, you, you need to go to the Lord saying, Lord, I, I, I need to know what I need to do to get these blessings done. What, what is it that I'm doing wrong, God, that my blessings are not happening the way that they're supposed to happen? And then there are others that just go to the Lord and say, well, this just ain't for me. I, I see what you're doing for others. You haven't done it for me, so I guess it's just not for me. But if you go to the Lord with that attitude, then your cup will never get full. It will never overflow. You will never see blessings that are for you because you have nothing and you're going expecting nothing. God don't work that way. God wants you to come to him with expectancy because if he said it in his word, if he said he'll do it, then he'll do it. You just have to trust and believe. You can't, you can't just not believe the word of God. God said he'll do it. If he said it, then that does it. That's self. He said, I'll give you all that your heart desires. I just stopped by this morning, brothers and sisters, to tell you that God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your life beyond your wildest dream. You see, if the Lord woke you up this morning, clothed you in your right mind, clothes on your back. He put food on your table. He, he, he stopped by and started you on your way. Then, then, then you're sipping from your sauce. Your cup is already overflowed. Uh, if the Lord has been a doctor for you, if he's been a lawyer, if, if he's been a company keeping in a lonely hour, you're sipping from your sauce. Uh, you, you, you can tell, tell your neighbor that, that, that I'm sipping from my sauce. My cup has overflowed. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but the God has been good to me. He's, he's given me everything that my heart desires. My, my saucer is full. It's running over. And he, he's keep on, keep on, and he keeps on. When you go outside and you don't have to worry about which car you're going to drive, you just get in a car and sip it from your saucer. When, when the Lord has has been 
away, out of nowhere. He, he's been a bill payer. How when you didn't have a dime in your pocket, but you woke up the next day and, and your sauce. You, you're sipping from your sauce. Somebody in the know what I'm talking about because God has been, he's been on your street. He's been good to you. You, you woke up this morning, didn't want to worry about what you were going to put on, uh, uh, how you were going to, you, you're sipping from your sauce. That's because when, when you sip from your saucer, God overflows your cup and he gives you more and more. And he keeps on his blessings, keep on and keep on and keep on. Because God is good at all times. Because you see, it was one dark Friday when they carried him up a hill. And they, they, they stretched him on an old rugged cross. He, he bled and he died, brothers and sisters, but he didn't stay there. They took him off that old rugged cross and, and they put him in an old barber tomb. See, see, he didn't stay in that old barber tomb three long days. Three long days on that Friday. No activity. On that Saturday, still no activity. But early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands to save a old wretch like you and I. I tell you, he's Mary's baby. He, he, he's the bright morning star. He, he's the lily of the valley. He's the great I am. He, he is God, and he's God all by himself. See, when God wants to bless you, he'll just do that. He'll give you everything you need, even when you don't think you deserve it. God will let you sip from your saucer because your cup has run over. Amen? Amen. The doors of the church are open this morning. Maybe there's someone sitting out here that just want to get it right. It's not because of what you've done or what you're doing. Don't wait for another day. Tomorrow is not promised. Yesterday is gone. We only have right now. So, be bold. Stand up. Get out of that seat. Walk down the aisle. Give the preacher your hand, but give God your heart. As the choir sings, the doors of my father's eyes are now open.
lost their kid in the parking lot. Live in the zone. When you get ready to go home, you won't be able to go. He can use you as a key. And he's going to take the call. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll get prepared and get ready to go home. Amen? Amen. amen. amen.